You're listening to Arirang Radio's Wonders of Jeju. This is a segment where we tell you about the lives of people living right here on the island. I'm your host, DJ Jamie. This is Humans of Jeju. We've got Jay in the studio to introduce another human. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Hi, Jamie. Yes. <laughs> that is so, like, spiritless. <laughs> yeah. Really? I'm trying Yay. To make... Wow. <laughs> no, but I know uh-huh. that you're excited to be here, right? Yes. Hello, everybody. Okay. Yes. It's good to have you in the studio. Mm-hmm. How have you been this past week? Um, Actually, I have a friend visiting from the mainland mm-hmm. and been outside home for a couple days now. And this is what happens to you when you're outside, I guess. What do you mean? What do you mean? I look like, don't I look like I'm in pain right now? What? <laughs> no, it, what no. Are you in pain? <laughs> Why? No. I've uh, been outside home, okay? Oh, so, so you've been yeah. like out and about and Yeah, busy. yeah, yeah. That's We've been visiting mean? places, uh, traveling a little bit. I see. All right. Well, it sounds exciting. Yeah. For people who don't know, like what you've been through but anyway (laughs) (laughs) anyways you're going to be introducing a wonderful human today for us who is it yes so we have a very interesting human of jeju today so let's meet today's human of jeju well it's a young farmer Mm, very short and brief um today's human of jeju is a young farmer named peg in ho who raises carrots and pumpkins in Kujaup area of Jeju City. Oh. Uh, just to add on to his short introduction, uh, before becoming a farmer, he worked in the fashion brand industry in marketing for 10 years. What? And wanting to live a more independent life, uh, one day he mentioned that he left on a travel. Oh. While traveling abroad, whenever he came back to Korea, Jeju was a place that he often visited. Mm. Uh, a very close friend of his was actually working as a farmer on Jeju Island. Mm-hmm. And that was how he first got to see the life of a farmer. Mm. While searching for a more independent life, a life that he is in charge of, in a place that he wants to live was when he got in touch with farming. Oh. And like that, he quit his job that he had done for the last 10 years. And after a long travel, began a new life as a young farmer on Jeju Island. How can that happen? Fashion brand industry. Working in the fashion, so from fashion to carrots. Yes. That's a long gap. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is. Very that's different. That's a huge gap. Okay, so so that's what happened and he became a young farmer. So it's a huge change as we can all see. What is, uh, what it... Like, you know, what is it through his friend's help that he was able to start a life as a farmer? Was it was it yeah. through his friend's help? Yeah. So by helping out his friend, he said he was able to learn about farming. Mm-hmm. So should we listen more about it? Yes, please. <laughs> 하면서 이제 그 친환경 농사라는 거에 대한 가치를 점점 느끼게 돼서 그래서 이거는 뭐 되게 어떻게 보면은 작지만 되게 중요한 일이라고 생각을 하고 있거든요. 뭐 제주의 땅이라든지 아니면 그거를 드시는 분들이라든지 뭐 앞으로 작게나마 이렇게 뭔가 조금 의미 있는 일이라라고 생각을 해가지고 더 이제 열심히 하려고 하고 있습니다. Interesting. Can you explain? So, according to him, the farming that he does is actually Uh eco-friendly. When he first started, he didn't really uh, consider the meaning of like eco-friendly farming and about protecting the environment. Mm -hmm. He actually just started it since it was the type of farming that his friend was doing. Mm. And he just happened to learn from his friend anyways. Mm -hmm. So, however, as he began to work more and more into creating an eco-friendly farming, he started to realize the value of it Mm -hmm. and how important important the work is. So now understanding the importance that it has on the future of Jeju land, uh, he plans to continue on with eco-friendly farming. Oh wow, that is awesome. So it's pretty surprising though how he's able to do a job that is totally different from what he was doing before and has no relation between like fashion and carrots. They don't even both start with a C. Yeah, so (laughs) just by the name of the job, the Mm. two may seem totally different. Um, But he mentioned that while doing the farm work, he also puts in his experience as a marketer into it as well. Uh, In the past, 
farming may have been just about like raising the crops. Mm -hmm. But today it's a very complex industry that includes like raising the crop, creating a brand and marketing the brand. Uh, so all that is included in his job as a farmer as well. Okay. So not only is he just raising an eco-friendly uh, farm, but he has also made his own brand, which is called Just Jeju. Oh. And being a type of person who likes to take action whenever he has like fun ideas, he has been trying out several experiments uh, using his brand as well. Mm-hmm. Some of the things that he has done, uh, doing, uh, he has been doing with the, like the pachis, like the um, crops that you can't uh, I never sell. heard the word, the Jeju <laughs> word pachi in a uh, um, uh, mikuk what, style. Like American word. Pachi. Pachi. Know, yeah, pachi. <laughs> pa- I don't know why I put the S in that, but... Um, <laughs> but, the, but pachi. Yes. It sounds like a name of an Indian. <laughs> so the pachi, uh, which, which like are like non-sellable. non-sellable. Yeah, like they're not... Um, they're not brandable. Right. They don't have a like a market value. Right. Uh, because of like their shapes or sizes. So... The pachis. Mm-hmm. So using those and working with like the jam making company in uh, Korea, uh, 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 in Jeju, uh, they made the um, Just Jeju Carrot Jam. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. With the and, pachis. Yes. And also with the pachis, he created <laughs> snacks for, pet, uh, for pets. Oh. Uh, and that's some of the things snacks that he's been doing pets. as well. That is really smart. Okay. So like, so not only is he farming, but also trying out various things uh, by creating a brand. So now I can see the connection Yes. with his marketing background. So it's, uh, it sounds like all this made possible thanks to his experience in marketing. Yes. Uh, but however, he actually mentioned that when he was working before as a marketer, mm-hmm. uh, he was not a very self-directed as he is right now. Mm-hmm. Um, when he was in university, he happened to do an internship, which mm-hmm. luckily turned into a full-time employee. Mm-hmm. And that was the company that he worked for 10 years. <gasps> so <laughs> That's yeah. a long time. <laughs> so like even before graduating school, he mentioned that he had a job and liking fashion. He enjoyed the job that he had. Uh-huh. But... Like being in a safe boundary of like working for a company uh, after 10 years in the company, he felt like his future was kind of decided and everything from the money that he was making to the work that he was doing was kind of all determined for him. I see. So being in the company for that long, uh, it was not easy to quit the job, Mm -hmm. but he felt like if he got any longer and longer into it, Mm -hmm. it would be even harder. So... He decided to do so. Uh, he decided to quit the job without even having second thoughts. Oh, I see. Because he might have felt like he would stay there for 20 years or something. That's usually yeah, what happens. That's too. usually yeah. what happens. Exactly. So did he have any plans of what he was going to do when he quit his job? I wonder. So, I don't think he was thinking about carrots. Yeah, I don't think he was thinking about carrots. Um, he mentioned that there was something that he had longed for. Uh-huh. So let's listen first <gasps> to what he said. Okay. 신나고 뭔가 설레이는 일이 뭐가 있을까라고 생각했었을 때 제가 되게 오래전부터 가고 싶었던 산티아고 슬리키이 떠오르더라고요. 그래서 물론 뭐 갑자기 어, 설레고 싶어 해서 갑자기 그만둔 건 아니고 여러 가지 상황들이 있었지만 그냥 뭔가 쉼표가 필요했었던 것 같아요. 뭔가 저의 삶에 있어서 중요한 터닝 포인트가 필요했었던 것 같고 그게 뭐가 뭔지는 정확히 모르겠으나 어쨌든 이 타임에서 끊어야 되겠다 생각이 들어서 그래서 이제 어 그럼 내가 제일 하고 싶은 걸 하자라고 해서 일단은 시작을 한 거죠. Mm, please explain. So he mentioned that he thought about what would make him like excited, stay mm. excited, mm-hmm. and what would be fun. So the thing that he found, uh, something that he had been longing for, was going to Camino de Santiago mm-hmm. or the Saint James Way. Uh, With many things that he had gone through during his career, he needed a little break in his life Mm -hmm. and hoping that break would become like a turning point in his life. Mm. He right away, he said he left to Camino de Santiago. Wow. There's so many people. I mean, I've I've actually before coming to Jeju Island, I never heard anybody had been to this place. Mm. And then after coming to Jeju, so many people we introduce and even our, you know, people I know have been to Camino de Santiago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and have walked uh, through that beautiful road over there and also through the Jeju Ole roads mm-hmm. as well. I just wanted to read a comment from Yanguru yes. who says, <laughs> I've been working eight years, so after two years, I hope I will quit like him. <laughs> <laughs> 
that uh, that may be his turning point in his life okay, too. Okay, everybody's so. starting mm-hmm. to count now. How many years do I have left, right? I, I wonder if our PD name is doing <laughs> that too. If you are in Jeju, 88.7 in Jeju City. 88.1 in Seogipu City. 101.9 in the Daejeong area. Today, we're introducing a young farmer named Baek In-ho. We ended by talking about his travel to Camino de Santiago. And so I'm very curious to know more about today's human. Tell us more. Yes. So a turning point in Baek In-ho, his life, was walking the Camino de Santiago. Uh, They say it takes an average man a little more than 30 days to complete the trail, uh, walking from when the sun comes up to when the sun comes down. Wow. Uh, So he mentioned that not a day went by feeling happiness while walking the trail every day. Um, Of course, there were days when he said uh, his body was tired and there were some bad days as well. Mm. But surprisingly, he mentioned he was happy every day. He was always happy. And every day seemed like a meaningful day to him. Wow. So he even talked about his experience uh, meeting a priest Mm -hmm, one day. mm -hmm. uh, And after talking with the priest and holding a prayer uh, service as well, on the day when saying goodbye, uh, he remembers how the priest wished him well on his travel. And he all of a sudden said he started to cry in front of the priest. <gasps> Why? Oh, and no. And as a grown-up, he mm. mentioned that he had never cried in front of someone. And wow. that was kind of a shocking moment for him. I see. But because of such moment, he always thinks that he made a good choice of mm-hmm. traveling to Camino de Santiago because those tears were, uh, he thinks, were because he was so happy <gasps> and grateful during oh, his no. trip. Oh no, you're going to have to stop t- stop there. <laughs> Otherwise, I think our listeners are going to start to cry. Oh my goodness. It's giving me the goosebumps, I have to say and be honest. So his tears were because he was overwhelmed with happiness. That's amazing. That really has got me to wonder about what Camino de Santiago is like and perhaps, I don't know. I don't know. I'm hearing mm. it so much like I need to get more curious about it. Okay, so then what happened after his travel then? So after his travel to Camino de Santiago, uh, he continued his travel for a year more, Mm -hmm. he mentioned. And it was during those travels, whenever he came back to Korea, he had visited Jeju Island. Uh, Like that, he came to see what a life of a farmer is uh, through his friend. And from it, he didn't really make the decision to become a farmer himself right away, Mm. but kind of watch the lifestyle for a long period of time Mm -hmm. and actually at the moment the more important thing to Pegino was not the job of the farmer but more so about where he wanted to live oh I see so he was actually more attracted to the lifestyle that his friend the farmer was living on Jeju oh I see I see so it was actually uh, you know something that he wanted was to live here which helped him to select the job of becoming a farmer now I understand okay mm-hmm. yes and let's first listen to what he had to say about that mm-hmm. <laughs> 매일매일 새벽같이 일어나가지고 막 엄청 막 열심히 하고 막 밭에서 새참 먹고 막 약간 하루 종일 밭에서 막 하는 그런 거라고 생각을 했는데 제가 근데 뭐 다른 분 농장에서 일할 때는 그렇게 하긴 했거든요. 그러니까 제걸 시작하다 보니까 이게 매일매일 그렇게는 하진 않아도 되더라고요. 그리고 날씨에 따라서 상황에 따라서 예를 들어서 처음에 파종을 하고 밭을 준비하고 이럴 때랑 수확을 할 때는 정말 바쁘거든요. 정말 몸도 너무 힘들고 비용도 많이 들고 하는데 중간 중간에 이제 관리만 해도 되는 시간 많이 투자하지 않아도 되는 그런 시기가 이제 있거든요. 그래서 뭔가 이 스케줄이라든지 뭔가 내가 뭘 해야 될지 이런 것들을 제가 다 판단을 하고 그 스케줄에 맞춰서 조금 더 자유롭게 뭔가 스케줄링을 할수 있게 되더라고요. 그래서 저는 사실 뭐 회사 다닐 때부터 하고 싶었던 걸 이제 좀 많았었는데 그중 하나가 무슨 와인바 같은 거를 이제 퇴근하고 해보고 싶다 이런 생각을 가지고 있었어가지고 그래서 이제 그런 생각 가지고만 있었는데 와서 보니까 농부라는 라이프 자체 어 낮에 그 할거딱 하고 저녁에 시간을 낼 수가 있더라고요. 그래서. What does he say? So according to what Pegino said, um, at first, before he actually started doing farming of his own, he had a actually like a fixed idea a stereotype of what a life of a farmer is like Mm. which is that be uh, a farmer 
to be a farmer, you have to wake up early in the morning every <laughs> yeah. day, uh-huh. and you have to work all day before the sunset. Right. Uh, of course, when working in others, uh, other farmers' farms, uh, he mentioned that was the case as well. Mm-hmm. But building a farm of his own, he is he actually mentioned that he's able to make a schedule that he can keep on mm-hmm. his own, mm-hmm. and that always kind of allows him to do other works as well. And he was able to do the works that he wanted to do. Mm-hmm. So one of the things that he always had in mind was that he, when he worked for a company. The idea that he had was working at a wine bar Mm. and he was not able to uh, before when he was working for the company, he wasn't able to do it. But now that he became a farmer, uh, it was possible to do. Oh, and he was able to give that a try. Mm. So last last summer, he saw a job post for a wine job that opened in Kuja area Mm -hmm. and got a chance to work part time there. Okay, Uh, like that. One by one, he began to do the things that he always wanted to do Mm. and realized that the life of working from nine to six is not actually a lifestyle that suits him. And the lifestyle he's living right now, it fits well with him. So Mm, I see. So even though he is a farmer, he is doing all sorts of other different types of works and jobs as well. That's amazing. What about the brand that he created? How is he managing that? So let's listen to what he said about his brand as well. 사실 처음에는 그냥 뭐 그냥 제주 제주도 농산물이야 약간 이런 느낌이 있었거든요. 막 대단히 특별하진 않지만 그냥 되게 심플하게 좀 얘기를 하고 싶어요. 제주 제주도 농산물이고 그냥 내가 열심히 만들었어 약간 이런 느낌으로 가고 싶어가지고 저스트 제주라고 했고 그리고 이제 그 로고를 만드는 과정에서 그 디자이너 분이랑 얘기를 하다가 그 디자인상 이제 한글로 이제 어떻게 할 건지 얘기를 하, 하다 보니까 이제 그저라는 게 붙었어요. 그저 제주로 이제 하자 해서 영문명은 저스트 제주고 그 한글로 이제 로고상으로는 그저 제주라고 되어 있거든요. 근데 이제 그저 제주라고 하, 하 만들고 나니까 이제 그 앞에 있는 그저가 이제 뭘 붙여도 되게 확장성이 있는 건 거죠. 아니 뭐 그냥 뭐 그저 뭐 당근이야. 그저 제주 농부야. 뭐 그저 이렇게 되더라고요. Okay, what does he say about this uh, just Mm -hmm. brand? So as mentioned before, rather than just raising a farm, uh, as he started a farm of his own, he created a brand as well. Uh, The name of the brand is Just Jeju. Mm -hmm. And having an experience of working as a marketer, he created a logo for his brand Mm -hmm. and began to create a story for it as well. Mm -hmm. So when coming up with the brand, at first he mentioned that he just wanted to simply introduce the agricultural products of Jeju, mm-hmm. uh, the, the ones that he was raising as well. So talking and working with a designer, they came up with the word just, mm. uh, which in Korea is kuja, and realized that the word kuja can be added to any word and sound natural. Mm. Like kuja tangunya means like it's just a carrot. Mm-hmm. Or kuja Jeju nongbuya means I'm just a Jeju farmer. Mm-hmm. So he's trying to expand the works that he can do as a farmer uh, using this name, just Jeju, just Kujo. It makes a lot of sense. I think the best thing for anything is simplicity. And that's exactly what he has just done with the word just and the Korean word Kujo. So how is he expanding his work as a farmer? So on his first year of farming, he realized that the earning from just farming uh, were actually not enough for the living. Mm -hmm. Uh, That may not be the case for people who actually have large farms, Mm. but for someone like him who's actually growing a small farm, the earning is, uh, he thinks, is not enough. Mm. So the idea that he came up with was working with other fields of works to come up with something else, Mm -hmm. a new item. So we mentioned some items before, like working with a jam company to make carrot jam, and making snacks for pets. Mm -hmm. Uh, Going even farther, he even worked with a sock brand that he likes Mm -hmm. and created socks Mm -hmm. and said the socks made by a farmer. Oh. Uh, Also in the future, he plans and is preparing to make clothing of his own as well. Oh, wow, cool. So so like this, working with others in different fields, he's experimenting and expanding in various fields. Wow, now he can become a consultant and consult us on how to start our own brand. (laughs) 
All right, that's really interesting. I mean, well, now it's kind of coming together. Now he can start using his fashion background. Yes. While mm-hmm. he's ca- kind of expanding mm-hmm. the the products that he's creating. Now, now. all about Korea. Korea. Arirang Radio. We are introducing a young farmer here in Jeju-do Island named Peggy Ho. And is there more about the life of living as a farmer that he shared with you? So through farming, one thing that he learned, he mentioned, is that things don't always go as you uh, intended. Especially in farming, the weather plays oh, a yeah. big role. Oh, and, yes. And like that, last year, because of the continuous typhoon, mm. all the harvest had to be done all over <gasps> again. Wow. So through the experience, uh, he realized how small we become in mm-hmm. front of nature. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, finding a solution, uh, he built an experience from it as well. Uh, he mentioned that he's a type of person who, if there is a problem, he doesn't run away from it, but tries to solve it and focuses on finding a better d- uh, direction. Mm-hmm. So when something bad happens, he believes that it can later lead to a better result. I totally agree with that that philosophy, that, that phenomenon. It totally does make sense. He seems like a very positive person as well. And for someone who is so positive, how does he spend his daily life on Jeju Island? Aren't we all curious? So he mentioned that he doesn't have a like a set schedule of what he does daily. Uh, but one thing that he does every day since living on Jeju Island is taking his dog Haruki out for a walk Mm -hmm. every morning for about five kilometers. Mm -hmm. Uh, Also, every Thursday, he also goes to Jeju City for a marathon gathering. Uh, In the gathering, he mentioned that everyone brings like a special food Mm. and shares with each other Mm -hmm. and also share the lifestyle of Jeju that they're living. Wow. Uh, So doing the farm work, working with others to make new items and doing other works as well. Uh, He makes plan as he goes. So he doesn't really live like a fixed life. Like, ah, mm-hmm. I see. So very free. Uh, yeah, it sounds like it's a very free lifestyle. He mentioned that he doesn't fit well with the life of an ordinary office worker. And it really does seem like the lifestyle that he is living right now um, and that it suits him. Then what are some items that he is thinking about collaborating to newly create? Uh, if you talk with Pegino and listen about the work of a farmer, you begin to see that the work of a farmer is not just limited to one thing, mm-hmm. but can get involved in various fields. So as mentioned, he created socks and is planning on making clothes as well. And it actually makes you wonder what he'll be coming up with next. So. Mm. I see. Okay. Wow. Well, we're getting a lot of comments on our YouTube live stream chat. I have my eyes on you, but because we want to continue to listen about this human, uh, let's continue on. So uh, this is a question that we always ask our human of Jeju guests is uh, what spot on Jeju Island would uh, he recommend for our listeners? And let's listen. 몇분들이 어떻게 여행하시는지 사실 잘 모르겠습니다. 보통은 차를 빌려서 이제 다니시잖아요. 근데 제가 워낙 걷는 걸 좋아하기도 하고 사실 산티아고길 가기 전 올레길도 되게 자주 왔었거든요. 근데 그때마다 느끼는 게뭐 자전거도 타보기도 하고 뭐 차를 타고 해보기도 하고 걷기도 해보기도 하는데 그 그게 다 같은 곳을 지나가더라도 같은 곳을 서뭐 여행을 하더라도 느낌이 아예 다르더라고요. 그래서 만약에 좀 시간이 여유가 있으시면 걷는 여행을 올레길을 한번 걸어보시는 걸 되게 추천드리거든요. 그래서 차를 타면서 여행했을 때 느껴보지 못한 뭐 냄새라든지 보이는 풍경도 다를 거고 뭔가 걸을 때 소리도 뭐 운전할 때는 못 들으니까 뭐 약간 그런 새로운 좀 제주를 좀 보실 수 있지 않을까 I totally agree mm. with what he says but for our camellias please explain so he didn't recommend a certain spot for us, but recommended a method of tra- traveling Jeju mm-hmm. and the Ole Trail. Uh, most when traveling Jeju, they do so by driving a car around. Mm-hmm. But what he would like to recommend is not renting a car, but traveling on foot mm-hmm. and trying out the Ole Trail as well. Uh, by changing the way of traveling around Jeju, you get to see and feel the different side of Jeju. Uh, something maybe you didn't notice before mm. when you were traveling by car. Uh, he mentioned that by walking, uh, 
he mentioned that through the smell, scenery, and the sound that you experience while walking, you'll find a whole new Jeju Island. That is so true. And because it's so windy here, sometimes it's like you stay in the car and you you, 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 you see a picture perfect mm. view, mm. but then you get out of the car and suddenly your hair is all over the oh, that's place. True too. <laughs> and it's even hard to hold the camera straight. Mm-hmm. And But, you know, I mean, that is part of the experience too, mm. right? And, and very interesting way he put it as well. Um, when you get out of the car, mm. you get a different sound of it as yeah, well. Yeah, that is so what true. what sound that the wind makes. And or, that's yeah. very interesting if mm-hmm. you stand there and totally. listen. Totally. Totally. That is so true. All right. Well, that was a really interesting introduction to another human today. Thank you so much for the introduction, Jay. And we look forward to seeing you again next week. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, I hope you enjoyed that segment. If you're curious to find out more about Jeju, we encourage you to go check out our website at arirangradio.com forward slash wonders of Jeju. Or you can check out our Facebook page at Wonders of Jeju, as well as our Instagram page at Wonders of Jeju. We're going to take you on a journey to learn more about what's happening here on the island.